from the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston. It's the Cube, covering IBM Think. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to the Cube's coverage of IBM Think 2020, the digital version of IBM Think. Bill Smith is here. He's the general manager of IBM Global Financing. Bill, thanks for coming on. Thank you very much for having me. I've been looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. So, you know, I remember the days of of the the glory days of IBM, you know, leasing. I, I used to run the leasing program for a couple of years at, at IDC and it was just it was an awesome time, but things have, have changed a lot. I mean, IBM has really transformed its financing arm. What do we need to know about today's IBM Global Financing? Well, some things are still the same, uh, but as you said, a lot is different. Uh, we coincidentally are celebrating our 40th uh, anniversary this year. Um, a big part of our business is now software and services financing, a lot of project financing. We still do a lot of, of, uh, of hardware business, but it's a much, much smaller portion of our uh, $30 billion asset base. Uh, so it's, it's a great business. It was a great business back then when you were involved in it. Uh, very profitable and, um, and uh, interesting business uh, today as it was then. As I said, big difference though, a lot of software and services. Yeah, well, I've, of course, I've, I would imagine that most, if not all mainframes are, are still leased, but now you've expanded it to many, many more areas. What can you tell us about you know, some of the financial metrics? You know, what's the profile of the, the business look like? Yeah, sure. It's, um, it's a big business. It, it looks a lot like a bank. Uh, we're around 30 billion in assets. We do uh, business in you know, 40 plus countries around the world. 26% uh, uh, return on equity. Most of the portfolio is very high percentage of that portfolio is investment grade. So um, a couple other key metrics is uh, we, we actually um, issue our own debt. Uh, we became an SEC registrant uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, we have uh, you know, many debt holders. Uh, we only have one owner and one equity owner and that's IBM. It's a very good uh, business, about 2% of IBM's revenue, but about 10% of IBM's profit. Yeah, well, so now this is an important uh, aspect that I want to drill into. When people you know, look at the IBM balance sheet, they'll you know, go out or whatever, Yahoo Finance, and say, oh my gosh, look at all this debt. Must be, you know, I know of course the Red Hat acquisition is part of that, but you're carrying a lot of the debt uh, as part of the financing operation but people need to understand it's a very profitable and very high quality debt. And I wonder if we could just address that. Yeah, one of the big benefits to becoming an SEC registrant is the amount of transparency that we were able to provide the investor. So unlike other captive financing companies uh, that just get rolled into different uh, units or parts of the books, you know, we actually report in the segment. Uh, reporting every quarter. Um, we certify just like a you know, public company would. We're still a wholly owned subsidiary, uh, but the level of transparency is really uh, great for the investors, which is why you know, debt holders were able to, um, willing to buy our paper. Um, it's still a very client-based business. We, we do very specialized structures. We only do business in, in IT, as I told the board many times, IBM board many times, we don't do planes, trains, and automobiles. We only do, uh, we only do IT and, and really 99% you know, of our business is, is IBM only. So you talked about uh, branching into software and, and, and services. I'm interested in how the, the client base has, has transformed as a result of that. Sure. You know, there's a lot of digital transformations going on. There's still a lot of ERP implementations around the world, very large project. So we, we describe that as project financing. So a client will come to us and say, Bill, we'd like to match the benefit of this very large GBS or services engagement that the IBM team is leading. We'd like to match the benefit when we have the cash outlay. So We'll put a structure together that will delay the payment uh, for when those benefits begin to come online for the enterprise, uh, and then match payment with when benefits are actually received. 
Um, it's proven to be a very, very effective uh, financing instrument for us, but highly effective uh, economic instrument for the clients. Well, it also gives, if I'm you know, contracting with IBM services, you've got a major incentive for the services organization to deliver value as soon as possible. I and mean, that aligns everybody, doesn't it? It absolutely does. Um, you know, we have a lot of uh, business partners where we'll do uh, uh, similar structures as well. So other integrators, um, you know, with the Red Hat acquisition and, and clients moving to a hybrid cloud model, uh, sometimes there's a migration that will take place between the traditional legacy systems and when they move to that cloud. Well, that bubble of expense, uh, we take care of. So we'll, we'll finance that migration effort uh, for the client. And again, to match their cash out plays with when they receive the benefit to that cloud, from that cloud migration. You know, back in the day, there were tons of leasing companies who would take the risk and you know predict the residual values, and then they'd take the paper, uh, and 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 then it was just an awesome business. Um, and of course, the government provided some incentives to to do that with the investment tax credit. What about things like refurbished equipment? Is that still something that that you do today, or is that a thing of the mainframe past? That's a great, yeah, that's a great question. You know, it's a it's still a really uh, important and a sustainable business for us. Um, we, we take equipment back that comes off of a lease or sometimes a loan, but typically a lease, and we will refurbish that or remanufacture that equipment and then put it back into market. Oftentimes it goes into our services organization for them to use with their clients. Uh, the global technology services typically, uh, you know, we will we will remanufacture or remarket about twenty nine thousand IT devices a week, uh, sixteen thousand tons of IT equipment uh, around the uh, in a year around the world. So at these remanufacturing refurbishing centers. So it's a even though the Hardware business has come down in its percentage of IBM's business compared to software and services. Uh, it's still a very, very big business, as you can see by the, the size of the um, number of equipment and the tonnage. What about some of the initiatives that are, so you mentioned, you know, uh, digital transformation, a lot going on with cloud, uh, machine intelligence. I mean, those big projects, you know, some of them are, are still multi-year, even though several people say, oh, there's no more multi-year projects, but digital transformations are multi-year projects, even though you might take them in chunks, but I'm going to capitalize those. Uh, uh, can I finance them as well? What role does, does IBM finance play in that? You absolutely can, and, uh, and that is a big, big part of our uh, business today. So the, the client will, Say, look, I've got a very uh, large digital transformation project going to take place in uh, four countries. Uh, we are uh, looking for an opportunity to match those cash outlays with when those countries come online or when we begin to receive the benefits. Um, we also want to finance some of the software uh, that goes with this digital transformation. And we also want to finance the IT infrastructure uh, that's required. So we may put those uh, services, software, and hardware on different uh, financial instru instruments, but it looks like you know one total bill uh, for the client. And it's um, and it's a global it's a global footprint. So we're able to handle the different currencies around the world, and um, and again, most importantly match those cash outlays with when the benefits are received. So Bill, you know, as long as I've been in this business, the IT investments from a CFO's perspective have always been viewed as a, a higher risk, granted higher reward, but, but you know, the, the CFOs would say, okay, you're going to have to have a little higher IRR uh, for this one because, you know, the business moves so fast, technology changes so quickly. Um, how are you seeing the CIO to CFO conversation evolve? 
What's your advice to, to CIOs <laughs> in terms of how they talk to, to CFOs? That's another really good uh, question. So I was just uh, on with uh, actually two clients this morning. Uh, one was a CFO, the other one was a treasurer. And they were asking uh, my opinion about uh, this financial instrument and, and, and getting some advice, actually. The conversation went, look, um, it's not really a cost of debt uh, issue. The, the cost of money is always part of the economic decision. But oftentimes, those clients use the financing instrument as a way to manage the asset, manage the asset throughout the life of the project. They also um, want to focus on the delivery, the quality of the delivery that, that uh, takes place during these uh, very, very large project financing uh, engagements. So um, uh, the CFO specifically said, look, I really like the business case. It's quite clear when we're going to receive these benefits. What I'd like to know, Bill, is how do you uh, view the risk of the implementation? Um, and you know, we were able to share with them the, uh, the risk work that we do with, uh, with the GBS team, our level of confidence that it will be done on time and on budget, and the skill level of the, of the partner team that's been assigned. So it actually um, has allowed us to have a different conversation with a different group or senior level uh, at the account, CFO, treasury, sometimes the uh, controller. Yeah, but you, you play an important role in, in de-risking uh, the, the business case. Uh, and as well, I mean, I would imagine right now in, in, in there, you know, these, these uncertain times that, you know, IBM global financing can provide liquidity to businesses who need it, that you, you know, are confident, you know, are, are stable business, but might need some help, you know, getting through this pandemic. We can. And uh, as you said, though, what makes us a little different is, um, you know, we make credit decisions on what we call arm's length credit decisions, um, you know, for a standalone, albeit captive financing company. So we're very, very focused on maintaining um, the right investment grade of the portfolio. Uh, we're going to make really, really good, prudent risk decisions. You know, that being said, we have some fabulous uh, IBM clients that have been clients for a long time. Uh, we work very closely with them, understanding their financial structures, uh, what's, what's important to them. And they're very transparent with us about um, you know, what financial challenges they have. So we'll continue to provide that liquidity. Uh, we are going to be very prudent, uh, but we'll certainly help those really good clients. Well, Bill, last question is kind of where do you see this going? What's your kind of vision for IBM you know, Global Global Finance? And you know, give us a little glimpse of uh, the future. Sure. Um, you know, I think you'll see us continue to migrate uh, in the direction that the IBM company moves. Uh, the IBM company is aggressively mo moving towards a hybrid cloud model. Uh, we'll continue to provide those migration services. We'll continue to do you know, some short-term financing. Uh, a part of the business we didn't talk about was the commercial financing. We provide short-term working capital to IBM 6,000 business partners. So to help them with their free cash flow running their businesses, you know, that's a pretty big business for us. We'll do about you know, 14 billion or so in financing to that commercial financing business. So I'll see that continue as well. Um, and then finally, um, I'm sure you'll see us continue to um, grow the software and services financing as well. And we'll stay with a very, very high financing rate for uh, whatever is left of IBM's uh, hardware portfolio. Well, the point you made about the partner financing is huge. Like you said, it helps them bridge uh, their free cash flow. Uh, it makes IBM a more attractive partner for, for those resellers and partners. It does, and we've been in that business for a very, very long time. Um, oftentimes, we're one of the um, you know, largest creditors uh, for those partners. So the liquidity that we provide them to allow them to run their businesses day to day with that short-term working capital is something that 
we're very committed to over the long term for IBM products and services. So IBM Global Financing, a very important and strategic part of IBM's business, a differentiator. A very few companies actually can provide that type of service to their clients. And so, Bill, really appreciate you coming to theCUBE and, and sharing that with, uh, with our audience. Great to have you. Thank, yeah, thank you very much for having me. It's been a real pleasure. Yeah, our pleasure as well. And thank you for watching, everybody. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE, our continuous coverage of IBM Think 2020. We'll be right back right after this short break. You're watching theCUBE.